Hi, this is the Deck Network, and I'm your host, Mike Danzilio, and we have co-host extraordinaire Matt Dalton here with you today. Another great episode lined up, ready to go. Mike, we're fired up today, man. Yeah, okay, this is, uh, it's 2013, and what we're going to talk about this year, very important, is deck safety. And deck safety starts with properly built decks. So we'll start at the bottom. We're going to talk about footings today, and when you use certain types of footings, and why you need to use them. Now I'm going to be referring to this book here, Deck Construction Based on the 2009 International Residential Code, written by Glenn Matheson. He's a uh, building inspector in Colorado. He's a great guy, very knowledgeable. He's also the technical director for the North American Deck and Rail Association. And this is a great reference guide for all phases of your building sure, project. Yeah. And it starts, like Mike said, with the footings. This you know, is where the whole stability of the project is going to lie upon. Sure. The final resting place for all forces imposed upon a structure is the earth, meaning that all the weights has to have to go somewhere. And so it has to be strong enough. The footing has to be strong enough. The soil has to be strong enough. And in general, the support post for residential decks, whether wood, concrete, or steel, will typically bear on pier foundations constructed of concrete, masonry, treated wood, or other appropriate materials. Now, Matt, when you uh, when you did your deck, you put these footings in, correct? I did it. They did a I'll lot of work, you. weren't they? A lot of work, but you know, you wanted to make sure you were going down deep enough with it, and you yeah. wanted to make sure you're below the frost line. And I'm telling you, it's tough work digging, but it's worth it in the end because you want to make sure your project is. It's going to last a long time. And this is a sauna tube that Matt knows real well, 12 inches in diameter. And you go down below your frost line, and we always want to uh, put this little disclaimer on, check with your local building authority before you start any project. Because sometimes there are little things to different areas. Little and, nuances, I'm sure, based on the soil composition yes, yes. and things like that. So. Okay, so when do you use different types of footings. Now these are the type of footings that we would probably... Oh, so there are more footing styles other than just going with the classic sauna tube? Sure. Now, if, uh, okay, now this is what you used in yours with this, was this, this sauna tube st style here. Okay. You can do a number of different things, but your bearing area has to be, if you notice, that all of these have the same bearing area. Okay. And the question is now, when you use each different one and how deep you have to go. You, know, you always want to go down six inches below the maximum frost line. And in in our area, it's uh, in New York. It's in this southeast of New York, Long Island, New York City. It's three feet. When I used to live in in the Boston area, it was four feet. So I'm sure maybe in Minnesota, and someone can write us from Minnesota, it may be five feet. So it all depends upon the area. Now the next little and then what? How strong does it need to be? So we have this one here. You have if you have clay, sandy clay then it's going to be 1,500 load-bearing pounds per square foot. If you add a little bit of gravel into it, it's up to 2,000. A lot more gravel goes to 3,000. Sedimentary rock and folated rock, which I don't know what that is, is 4,000 pounds. And if you have crystalline bedrock, which would be a great footing, it's 12,000 pounds. That's the strength of the, you could really put a, you wouldn't have to put much of a footing if you had this crystalline bedrock. Where the rock. hell are you finding crystalline well, bedrock? Here's yeah, another photo that I have here. Maybe a you have the, or you something? have the deck coming off the house. Right here, you'd have, have to have the necessary footing. Right here, if you have that crystalline bedrock, then your mm. footing can rest on top of it. So you're saying there could be different footings employed for the same deck? Yes, and usually you don't see that because people will always tell you use the same footing throughout. Yes, because you know, as I read Glenn's book, if this deck here is not attached to the house, it really doesn't require a full footing. People love to hear that, but uh, that's that's. Is it overkill then to have a footing on that, or you might well, as well? If... Of course, hey, building that stronger is always better. Mm -hmm. So we're going to uh, look at a video that I've had for a few months here. I took it, and I was at the Deck Expo in Baltimore last. October and it was and it's about footings so we have three different types of footings that we're going to talk about today the standard sauna tube footing that Matt is very aware of and this the, the bell-shaped footing and then the helical pile and we'll talk about little bits of where you would use each one of those footings 
So let's uh, jump right in. Hi, we're right now with Alan Weiner from Failsafe Form Footer. How are you, Alan? Hi, nice to meet you. We actually know each other a little bit from LinkedIn and this and that. He recognized my name and I guess my face. So this is a really strong sauna tube when you can use it for the application. Alan, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Absolutely. What we have here is a bell-shaped for, uh, pure footing, 25-inch footing. The way that we have it is, is it comes incorporated with the rebar, pre-cut, pre-bent, quick assembly, you're looking at two minutes. Really? The way that this is packaged, it comes all condensed as you can see right here in a box with the rebar pre-cut, pre-bent. I have a smaller size also, which has an 18 inch base that reduces to 12. They both reduce to 12. So do they all have, the different sizes have associated weights for them, uh, engineered weights? Correct, it's how much load you need to have based on what your engineer is telling you for your application, whether it's decks, additions, additions. Sure. houses, heck, look at that. Yeah. This is beefy. Manufactured I mean, this thing, homes. This thing has a real nice footprint on it. Again, it's with different soil applications are going to tell you what you need to do. Correct, based on your engineering. If you have a 1500 PSI soil, which is real loose, yes. you're looking at a 5,000 pound allowable load on our 25. On the 18, very simple, it's 2,500. Alan, thanks for the information. Thank you. Great stuff. Okay, that's, uh, that footing that's is a, a bell footing now? That's, yeah, that's a little, that's stronger. It, it, you don't, remember, you need your area at the base to hold the weight and it comes up, it has rebar in it. It doesn't have to be that size all the way up. Again, the most difficult part is digging the hole depending upon the soil conditions. But if you have, you can use these for additions. And again, it's a sliding scale depending upon how much weight you're going to put on the footing itself. Now, the next part of the video is on helical piles. So, if, and people say, well, what the heck that is That sounds pretty fancy, yeah, my okay. guy. If you have very sandy soil, now, again, we live on Long Island, we have a lot of oceanfront property. Up and, and down the northeast, you're yes, probably gonna yeah, find yeah, conditions yeah. like that. It's sand, the beach, it's sand. So you couldn't put even one of these, this footing here, or one of uh, Matt's sauna tubes, when, when on beach sand because it's eventually either going to sink or shift or something or other. So, helical piles. Hey, hi, we're with Josh Kaiser from Foundation Support Works from Omaha, Nebraska. And this is a product that I've been working and been studying on for a little bit. Helical piles. Let's, Kevin, let's take a look at this thing. This is instead of a sauna tube. If any of you visitors uh, from the Deck Network saw that we did the uh, the deck with uh, my friend Matt, he had a very difficult time with his sauna tubes. So, Josh, why don't you take it away and tell us why you use these products and what they're for? Yeah, I mean, helical piles in general are going to be used in a variety of applications. One application is going to be for, like you see here, with decks or lighter structures like sunrooms and pergolas. It's going to be a deeper alternative um, to a concrete. Um, the advantages are obviously you're not having to dig, wait for inspections, and then also wait for concrete to cure. Uh, you can actually just dip these down into the ground and build right on top of them right away without any downtime. So a lot of good advantages to them. Um, if you get into unstable soils, there can be a variety of applications that are used a lot in um, new construction, residential, as well as commercial properties. Um, where they know they're going to be building on unstable soils. Um, you'll get soils reports and then um, they're using again in a variety of different applications. This is just one small application that we use. It's a two and three eighths shaft uh, with an adjustable top on it. Um, so you can adjust it. It gives you a lot of play. Um, we manufacture up to eight and five eighths diameter for again larger commercial and industrial type applications. Now I have a, a few videos planned for this product because the problem is a lot of times you'll put a standard sauna tube in the ground, three foot, four foot, or whatever the code mandates in your area. And we find a lot of deck builders are telling us that the, the decks sink because the soil isn't strong enough. And this is when you have to use a product like this. And so it saves some time, saves some money when you have some issues with it, and you're going to really know how strong your footing is. Isn't that correct? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, you're monitoring pressures as you put it in. Uh, so you're reading gauges and those pressures relate to a capacity so you know exactly what capacity that the system's going to hold as you put it in. All right, Josh. Thanks for the information. I'm very interested in the product. All right, we appreciate it. Yep, thanks, thanks again. Thanks for stopping by.
All right. All right, Matt, what do you think of that? Well, first of all, I love how you matched the shoes to the shirt in that video. Okay, that well, was just that, brilliant. That's what we, we do helical piles. Yes. Now, I have a video. I, I actually know two gentlemen who have businesses putting in helical piles. Of course, I've been in the Northeast. That's a business. And I went and I did a video of one, and we'll have that one of these days on the Deck Network. And he has like a an excavator, a small excavator, and he's in the backyard, and he they put that that, it almost looks that like an auger spiral bed thing, at the yes. bottom on. and he has his his uh, attachment is all hydraulics, mm -hmm. and it twists that in, and is a dial telling the operator how much pressure it takes to turn it around. Okay. So as that gets down through the soft sand into the harder soil, Bedrock and then he knows when that dial gets up to a certain point, then that's in hard enough soil. If so you keep going shit. down, you'll have to put extensions on that. Sometimes they're down 20 and 30 feet wow. in order to get this to certain. To, but those aren't going anywhere. Yeah, like you put pretty, a deck yeah. up on that, and that's not going anywhere. So Helical pile. Yeah, helical piles. I have a photo in here somewhere of a... Let's look at this. Yeah, it doesn't really show it well, but it's, it goes down below, and that holds it. If you have real soft, sandy soil, that's what you have to do. Now... Why are we talking about this? And again, I want decks to be built safely. Safely, again, starts with properly built decks. So if you're hiring a contractor and they're not going to even tell you about the footings, ask them about the footings because they're going to cheat on footings because they're going to want to cut corners there because yes, it is and, pretty labor intensive. Yes, it's a lot of work to dig those holes, as Matt knows. Digging builds character, guys. We yes. can't stress this enough at the Deck Network. If you want to look Get out back, there, grab a shovel. <laughs> we got the old videos up there from uh, the summer of last year. Check it out. Yep. There's some really great resources out there. And grab a shovel, man. Come if, on. If you're building your deck this year and you're hiring somebody, always ask them about the footings. This year, we're gonna. the next one we're going to talk about is the frame, which that'll be maybe next week we'll do that one. The frame. We want to talk about the frame and the hardware and the railings. All these different parts are very important for a safe, long-lasting deck. Last fall in October, we had this crazy hurricane here, and there was decks that made it through the storm. There was decks that had poor footings, and they just washed away. Again, sometimes if you get hit with a wave, that's never going to. They, you know, that's not going to. That's they, a once in a. Yeah, once that's in a just generation going to take the whole deck, thing, no matter yeah. how it's built down. But some of these decks made it through the storm because they were built properly. A lot of these decks that people spent a lot of money on, they're gone. And, and we here at the Deck Network are, are committed to working closely with people that have been affected and helping rebuild. Mm -hmm. This community yeah, yeah. after the storm. So and if you guys have been affected, please write us, and we'll try to if you take have, a course of action that's going to help you guys get back on track. If you're going to redo your deck this year and you're not sure whether if it's safe enough, just send me some pictures, Mike at thedecknetwork.com, right through the website, and I'll, I'll give you a little evaluation because I know I've been looking at this stuff forever, and sometimes, again. A safe deck starts with good footings. All right, Matt, anything you want to add to that? Good footings build good communities, and that's what we're trying to do here on the Deck Network. I'm looking forward to the next video, Mike. Write us your letters. Have them coming in here, and uh, we'll get with you next time. All right, that's it for today. Thanks again. Ciao for now. Bye.